Hello, everybody. Um, the absolutely terrific Michael Laxo from the Henken Business School in Helsinki in Finland has pre-recorded, while we've been having lunch, um, our uh, remote presentation today. So we will begin that in just a moment. He is with us online. Hi, Michael. And so you can uh, chat uh, if you've got questions for him through Slido. Um, and we can get his responses as well. So this is a nice hybrid session. Um, before starting that, I just wanted to contextualize uh, this short paper in terms of some of the themes that have emerged in this fantastic conference. The first thing to say is that Michael will be focusing on the digital preservation of open access books, but I think um, the powerful thing about the research he's been doing is that it, it actually speaks to all of us who are involved in print book preservation of any kind or in collaborative collection development of print and electronic materials. So do you think a little bit more expansively about some of the suggestions and recommendations he'll be surfacing? The second thing I would say is that inspired by Tamar's terrific keynote presentation this morning, we would like to really humbly invite you to think through this problem space with us. You'll see um, from Michael's results that this is an enormously challenging and complex space. It is impossible for any organization or handful of organizations to solve some of the problems we've surfaced. And we're really um, looking forward to comments, ideas, suggestions, partnerships to try to solve um, this. So um, please think, think this through with us and let's form a community. So Good afternoon, all you lovely IPRESS people. My name is Mikael Laakso. I work as an associate professor at Hanken School of Economics. And uh, this short video will give you an introduction of what the project I've been collaborating on with Alicia Weiss uh, from Clox and Ronald Schneider from the OAUPEN Foundation that concerns the preservation status of open access books and particularly figuring out some of the main uh, challenges and, and obstacles to really figuring out just how many open access books there are on the web and, and finding out how large a share of those are enrolled in some preservation service. So our title is Peering into the Jungle, Challenges in Determining Preservation Status of Open Access Books. And this is a work in progress uh, and I'll share with you some of our initial results of our figuring out of, of, uh, of uh, just how many books there roughly could be or are and what share of those we can figure out to be preserved somewhere. Just as an introduction, um, the, the universe of open access books, so books that can be downloaded for free over the web uh, is constantly growing, just as with open access to scholarly journals and articles, uh, it's more and more uh, common to find this type of content on the web. So this is not something that seems to be dying down anytime soon. On the contrary, it's becoming more common and, and more in, more uh, greater in volume. And something that's been a question with scholarly journals and also is a question with books is who should preserve? Uh, whose responsibility is it? Because uh, when we talk about totally digital materials and digital that no uh, end customer purchases, the roles become a bit muddled from maybe the traditional idea of a library always uh, being responsible or the publisher always being responsible for enrolling in, in uh, the content in some kind of a long-term preservation service. So that's still a bit up in the air and that's why we think it's interesting to, to have a closer look at this, uh, 
this space. So what could we do in the future to, to facilitate better uh, preservation of this uh, content is one of the kind of um, kind of guiding questions here. But I guess first we have to figure out just where we currently are. Um, and as we'll see, and as probably many of you know, the, the practices for how open access books uh, are preserved are still very much developing when it comes to services and, and the different practices that actors have. So there's no de facto way to do this, even though there's many actors already uh, very active in this space, there's still a lot of variation in, in what's seen as uh, the way to do it, so to say. And uh, our journey so far in this research project, uh, as a first step, we wanted to create like a global bookshelf of open access books and then uh, mostly focusing on scholarly open access books. So trying to not include uh, 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 fiction in the data set. So trying to focus on that which is probably research based or at least could be used for basis of research. So trying to limit us to the scholarly realm. As a second step, when we figured out what's the length and uh, depth of the, uh, the global bookshelf of content that's already open on the web, uh, we'd figure out how many of these are already enrolled in some of the more, most prominent preservation services. And as a third step, since all of this content is hosted openly on the web, we thought that we could also have a look at what type of web pages and services are hosting this content, just to figure out what type of actors are, are uh, hosting uh, the, the largest volume of content and how long the tail for small providers is. And all of this revolved around using open uh, bibliographic indexes, search engines and open data sets. So none of this was done uh, using proprietary data. All of this can be replicated by, by someone else and, for example, you, the listener, if you want. But we had, uh, for open access books, we used the directory of open access books, which is a very prominent source here and, and a well curated one. Uh, WorldCat, the library uh, uh, database, has a small number of open access books that are listed. Uh, the new service, Open Alex, uh, by our research, has uh, many open access books that you can filter to CLO Books, the Lens search engine the open air research graph. These all have facilities to, to access uh, data that lies underneath that, that identifies open access books to various degrees and on various criteria. And then what we could find so far regarding preservation services, clocks, portico locks and Libro Aberto uh, are some of the ones we tried to match against to see which of the books are have correspondence in some of the preservation services. But all in all, we could find uh, slightly under 400,000 uh, items that, that, are in, that are tagged as books and open access in these services. But of course, this is not uh, a completely clean data set. There's uh, a large number of individual chapters uh, and uh, even research articles in there that are misclassified by these uh, services. But uh, it's impossible for us to try to manually curate those out. So. So, so we, we are going on the basis of what the data uh, tells us, but, but there are hundreds of thousands of open access books on the web. That's for certain. And this is maybe a co complicated slide in a way for you to, to interpret if you've never used these services before, but here we try to visualize what's the overlap of uh, these uh, unique books, open access books in these different uh, data sets. So you can see that the lens provides uh, a large volume of content that's also reflected to some degrees in, in other databases, but 27% of the, of the total content is unique and coming only from the lens data set. And the director of open access books has overlap with a number of other uh, uh, data providers, but 3.74% is unique to only that. So, we haven't explored these overlaps further, but as we can see, 
using multiple data sets seems to result in better, a, a better global bookshelf of books. And some of the challenges we've observed so far and are, are also uh, described in more, at more length in the, in the paper we had for iPress is that uh, these different services have different definitions of what an academic or scholarly book is and when it's open access because uh, there's uh, different automated or, or manually curated tags for, for open access in these uh, data sets and, uh, and that also results in the data quality that you get out. So it's not always uh, an optimal uh, result you get out of it. So even though you do your best with the available tools, you'll not end up with a perfect data set just yet. Uh, one problem uh, we ran into is that many of these data services uh, are contain very valuable data for purposes like this, but they all have different different ways of getting to that data. You need to access uh, custom-made APIs or download large data sets and try to filter out stuff from there. And many of these are quite cumbersome. So even though we have kind of a simple question of trying to figure out just how many open access books are there on a unique basis, you kind of have to jump through some hoops to do it because uh, on a normal personal computer, you might quite quickly run out of memory to keep, keep those large data sets. Uh, processed and getting what you're actually interested in out of them. And something that's unique to uh, books when compared to journals, which I, for example, am more experienced with working with journal metadata, is that books have many uh, unique identifiers and, and different publishers and service providers use different ways of uniquely identifying books. So books can have one or many ISBNs tied to it or, and or a digital object identifier. And then trying to figure out these overlaps and, and uh, the uniqueness of these different data sets, both regarding the global bookshelf and, and regarding the preservation is kind of a mess since you have to check for correspondence in DOIs, ISBNs, and we also use just the titles of the book also as a matching identifier, even though that's not optimal. And we could see that most of the preservation uh, services use ISBNs as the unique identifier, while many of the content providers on the web use DOIs. So there is kind of a, a kind of mismatch there and, and maybe some uh, development could be done in order to get those more aligned and, and to connect preservation knowledge and preservation information uh, to the format most commonly communicated and, and used by content providers. These are just, this is a lot of stuff on this slide, but just the preliminary results of where these books are hosted based on uh, four of the prominent data sets. So Director of Open Access Books, OpenAir, OpenAlex and The Lens showing the count of books uh, in uh, descending order of, uh, of frequency from the top. So seeing that uh, open, open <laughs> however you pronounce it, has uh, 18,000 uh, books, for example, in its domain and, and it's the most prominent domain in, in, uh, for the director of open access uh, books. Uh, but biodiversity library, library is the most prominent one for the three other data sets and so on. And we can see here that the, the long tail is of different length when it comes to these different services where we can see that, for example, OpenAlex has uh, almost 1,500 more domains that contain 30% of the remaining items that's not accounted for in this table. So the tails are fairly long, but there's all already pretty well established big providers of, of open access books that we can see from here. So this we did by resolving the DOIs to the URLs. This is maybe the, the, the main meat of this presentation, trying to see this matching. And we could see that uh, in for the direct director of open access books, we could figure out that almost half or like 46% of the content is preserved in some of these uh, preservation services. Uh, WorldCat with around a third of its content, OpenAir, 25% and 
and then smaller shares for open Alex and the lens uh, indexed or, or uh, included books. So this is where we are so far in figuring this out. Uh, and I think it's uh, really interesting to see where we currently stand. And of course, it would be better if we could e include even more preservation services. For example, what some national libraries include in their digital collections and could be retrieved openly on the web by anyone. Uh, but before we conclude, uh, just some remarks, so I don't go over time, is that some of these DOIs resolve to error pages or very volatile domains like Dropbox links, Google Drive links, and stuff that we know will not survive in time. So there, there is definitely a problem uh, that not all, even DOIs, aren't perfect in this space. And we should maybe think about, and, and some of this session could revolve about discussion about how we could try to advance uh, collaboration between stakeholders to in, improve preservation circumstances, also when it comes to open access books. And then, how should we best cater to those smaller providers of books to also get them included into preservation services? This is a problem with journals through the, that the Jasper project tried to, to, tried to rectify and improve in, in trying to get also small providers enrolled into robust services. So how should that happen with open access books? Now I'm already dangerously uh, at the end of my time here. I want to thank you all for your attention. And if I have the possibility, I'll gladly ask, um, answer any questions through the chat. But hey, have a great afternoon and thank you for listening. Over to Alicia.